I just want to say, whoever uh, parked in the handicapped spot out back, <laughs> I wrote a little note on your car <laughs> with my key. So, <laughs> so you know what? I'm the guy who invented the handicapped parking spot. I came out of a bar late one night. I had a little too much to drink. I uh, over sideways in the parking lot, a cop, cop came up, thought I was dead, out in the Indian shop. And, uh, I remember the parts there. Uh, oh, you want to hear something funny? Oh, this, uh, this weekend I'm coming out of the grocery store, and this guy pulls into a handicapped spot, right? And nothing's wrong with this dude. He gets out of his car, he's whistling, right? he's walking fine, but he notices me, right? And all of a sudden, some bitch develops a limp. So I follow this asshole around the store. I'm right behind you, Limpy Boy. I'm right Limpy Boy. I'm down the frozen food section. I'm behind you, Limpy Boy. He's looking at the cereals trying to hide from me. I'm like, where are you hiding from, Limpy Boy? I go, you don't eat no Captain Crunch, bitch. So I follow him back out. I follow, I follow him all around the whole day. I follow one of his errands. So yeah, pick up his dry cleaners. I'm following him. Pick follow him to the bank. He comes out of the bank. I finally follow him home, right? Frank gets out of his car. What are you doing, man? What are you following me for? What are you doing? What are you following me for? I said, because you're a faker and you're a liar. All right? And I don't like that. He's like, all right, I'll admit it. I'm a faker and a liar. I'm like, you damn right. And I slap him. I say, give me 300 bucks, bitch. And I know you don't like Captain Crunch cereal. <laughs> Is I noticed that there's um there's nothing in walking distance. <laughs> a sick ass crowd. You know what I mean? and, uh, and, and people, you know what I can't stand is people always come up to me and they say stuff like, you know, you're so courageous. Because <laughs> this happened to me like last week I was in the park walking my dog and this lady comes up to me. Darling. I just want you to know you're, you're so courageous. I <laughs> well, thanks, man. But then I pointed to my dog with his nose up some bitch's ass and I said, you know what, that's courageous right <laughs> now. <laughs> you know who I'm known as? I'm known as the guy in the wheelchair. You know? That's me. Who's that fellow over there? Oh, him? No. He's the guy in the wheelchair. <laughs> It's not too bad. You know, I guess I could be known like as, you know, who's that guy? Oh, 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 oh he's the guy with the herpes on his lip. Yeah. Oh, that, oh, that guy, he's the guy with the penis attached to his forehead. Yeah. Who's that guy over there? Oh, like, he's the guy with the penis attached to his forehead. Oh, really? He's with the guy in the wheelchair. Yeah. I know, it's weird. You know, I mean, and one good thing about being paralyzed, I'll tell you what, this happened to me. I was uh, in a bank one day, and this guy came in, came in waving a gun. He said, like, nobody move a muscle. So, like, I was good to go. <laughs> Car. <laughs> 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 he 
least she's like bipolar. Cause like, <laughs> she'll kiss me and slap me, kiss me and slap me. A man can only take so many years of that. <laughs> and we get a little playful, we playful moves. Like I remember one night our conversations were like, honey, would you wear the teddy? I'm not gonna wear the teddy. Honey, please put on the teddy. Yeah. So, so finally I would put the damn thing on. <laughs> I remember the guy, she said, you, you know, you're nothing but a selfish pig. I'm uh, like, yeah, whatever, words can't hurt me. And, uh, you know, boy, was I wrong, she hit me in the face with a dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so we, we broke up now, so that's I don't know why. I brought her to bed with my brother. They were like laying there naked smoking cigarettes. You, know? you can imagine, I just flipped out, went crazy. I was like, you know what? If you guys don't give a damn about your lungs, then why should I? You know? <laughs> <laughs> My friend says, you know what you ought to get is one of those Russian girls, you know? And I'm like thinking, well, the Russian girls I know, I picture from the Olympics. <laughs> Big, hairy, strong women, and uh, um, would you get that while I kick in the head? Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and, these, and the Russian girls, I don't know, like, like I don't know, they're like big and strong. Like, they're all on steroids. <laughs> I just want to bring up a friend of mine, he's a Russian blues singer. He wants to sing a song about some of the Russian women he knows. And uh, I believe, uh, let's bring him off stage for Vladimir or going to go for it. <laughs> Thank you very much, capitalist pigs. <laughs> I'd like to do a Russian blues song for you called Steroid Blues. It's about the Russian women. <laughs> My name is Vladimir Oskoniko Bonovich. <laughs> and I drink vodka dry. <laughs> if you ever saw a Russian woman, you would understand why. <laughs> they look like some kind of wild beast. <laughs> a big and ox or a baby cow. <laughs> You'll probably find them out in the field pulling the big farming plow. You might know, wonder what the problem is. That if you Putin's not the bad mood, it's those big, strong, heavy Russian women. So have you made a steroid balloon? Josh, you're done here. Let's wait for him.